Okay, so we're a little late to the game, but better late than never, it is time to do some pruning of our plants. So here in the hoop house I have three different types. I have the big old Corsican, big bowl, gourd shape. In the middle is the Cucuzzi, or the more slender Italian for that's used much more for eating. And then over here is the birdhouse one that is just this beautiful riot of tangled vegetation. So this one I'm going to let continue on um, to do its thing, growing it much more for the vegetation, kind of create that dappled um, arbor that Thomas Hill speaks of. The kukuzi is not as vigorous of growth, so I'm just going to kind of let it do its thing. But this one here, the Corsican, is one that I'm really interested to make sure has as much chance of developing strong, big, beautiful bowls. And so pruning is going to be helpful in that. So here in Thomas Hill's chapter 30 for the gourds, he speaks a little bit more about um, getting the gourd plants growing. He speaks to when they first appear, keeping them piled with dirt. But then over here, he talks about um, that the branches spread for, whether upright or on the ground, to be cut away here in preserving only that stem, which is shot forth last. So we're going to be pruning away all of these side branches, or most of the side branches, to preserve the one central leader. Ugh, it's growing all the way up there. Ta-da! Um, fantastically vigorous vines. These are so much fun. And the goal with that is what we're going to be doing is much like we do modernly with pruning tomatoes, we are diverting all of the energy that um, the plant produces into just a few fruits. And so because these get so big, um, I want to make sure that this plant has all the energy diverted to just a few fruits that are pollinated early on. So it has as much energy and as much of the summer heat as possible to grow these Corsican gourds. So a quick little rundown of the structure here. So we have our main stem coming up here and then in between our nodes is the internode area and the ones that are growing in the raised bed medieval style. These are inner nodes are really short but um, so this is much easier to see. And then at each node we have a few different structures. We have the main stem that's going to continue up and continue this pattern. Then we have a flower. This was a male flower that is a few days past it's blossom time. We have a big old sun leaf that's hanging out here, all coming from here. We have this tendril that is cleverly attached itself to the hog panel for support. And then we have this whole other stem that we do not need right now. That one I'm going to let grow just because it's down at the base and it'll kind of be fun. We're going to select a different one up here. So here's that same structure, central stem that continues on and upwards, big old sun leaf, here's our spent flower blossom, and then here's our side shoot. And just using my fingernail, I'm gonna, uh, hard to do one-handed, and I should have been doing this a while ago. Wow, that's a lot more vigorous than I thought. All right, and just pluck it off. Hopefully. I was saying hopefully that didn't do any damage, and it looks like we're okay. It's starting to already callous up, so we're set there, but a good testament of why we wanted to do this a little bit earlier in the growing pattern. So with that, I'm going to come up here where the side shoots are a little bit younger and hopefully easier to deal with. So again, here is our internode. We have one big sun leaf coming off. We have a flower here which is going to be male, and then we have our side shoot tendril here, you can see it's just short, and then the main stem continues onwards here. And so, I'm just going to, I really should go get a knife to do this, but ah, there we go. And again, continuing on the main stem, get to a node, big old sun leaf, flower, again it's going to Oh, this might be a female. Well, that's probably going to be male. Continuing stem. 
And then we have our side sheet over here. And so this, pop it off. And once again, continue on <laughs> the stem. <laughs> Up we go. Here we have our big old sun leaf hanging out. Oh, no, that's that one. Yeah. Here's our sun leaf for that node. Our flower blossom, our tendril, and this is much better to be <laughs> doing this pruning practice at this little baby side shoot that's going to start to form a new stem. And we just pop it off and continue on. Du -du 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 -du. Big old sun leaf, flower blossom, tendril. Here's what's developing into the side shoot. Clip it off. Du -du -du -du. Last node. Sun leaf, flower, main stem, side shoot, and just pluck it off. And just for a quick fun comparison, doing that same pruning practice here on our more medieval -y grown ones. And so we can come down here and we see that similar structure. The main stem, this big old sun leaf, num. Um, the main stem continuing onwards here. A flower. This one looks like to be another male flower. And then the side shoot. And so then just clip off the side shoot and pitch that. Or you can eat this too. Um, yeah. So continuing on upwards, here's this little side shoot right there. Gonna take that one off. Here, flower, tendril, sun leaf. So this must mean it's this is the side shoot. Let's put that off. And continuing on here. Main stem, tendril, sun leaf, flower, side shoot. Bye bye. Yay! So pruning our gourds. How fun. So as I continue to prune here using my fingers, you may ask, oh hey, why don't you do this using like garden shears? Garden shears as we know them, the bypass garden shears, didn't come on the scene until the 1700s. And so, oh, we're going to have another female flower tomorrow to pollinate. Yay, I'm excited. Um, so, using fingers like this are actually very historically accurate, as is using a knife or even a small little bill hook. And with that, the technology dictates the shape and the complexity that we can achieve with our pruning practices. And so that's why you don't see really complicated pruning like the really formal espaliers with fruit trees and things like that come on to the scene until like Louis the 14th and his amazing uh, focus on gardening. So yeah, sometimes tools dictate the form for sure. So finger pruning and finger pruning works great too for apples if you catch up, uh, if you catch things on time and keep up with it.